Hey everybody, this is Kevin again. Taking a walk. This is another one of those videos where I'm going to take a walk and talk to you. Um, you know, in the last video I was talking about the fact that there's a lot of confusion in the church today with all the different doctrines. And uh, this is kind of almost a continuation of that thought. But you know how I'm always being told that uh, we need to be... Uh, going by the teachings of God, not the teachings of men. And uh, so the question is, where do you get the teachings of God from? And where do you get the teachings of men from? Uh, because a lot of these people that say this, uh, they're getting their teachings from men too. Men in the pulpit. Men that write books. That's where they're getting their teachings from. They're not getting it directly from God. You know, they say they do. They say they get it directly from the Word of God, but yet they'll say, yeah, but this scripture, this passage is a metaphor. This passage is, uh, is symbolism. You can't take this literal because it's just symbolism. It's a metaphor. Well, guess what? If it's a metaphor, if it's all symbolism, then you can make it sound like anything you want. If none of it's literal... Especially when it comes to prophecies from the prophets and from Revelation and, and other books, Daniel. If none of that's literal and it's all symbolism, you might as well rip them out of the Bible. You might as well rip it all out and say, you know what? It doesn't apply to me. I don't care. I can't ever understand it. It's just, you know, I'll never understand it because so it's not understandable because it's a metaphor. It's all symbolism so you might as well rip it out and not even pay attention to it and that's what a lot of people do today actually a lot of people even though they don't rip it out literally they ignore it they don't even read it they don't study it they'd rather study passages from the gospels only and usually the synoptic gospels of matthew mark and luke that's where a lot of people get their ideas and beliefs about Bible prophecy from they get it from Matthew Mark and Luke they say oh that's the direct teaching from Jesus those are direct words from Jesus but these other words in 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 all the other books in the New Testament are just from men they're just from the the Apostles we can't trust them we got to trust only the words of Jesus really so all those other books that we have in the canon of scriptures are not really divinely inspired they're not the Word of God, only the, the Synoptic Gospels. Is that it? Wow. That kind of limits us, doesn't it? It limits our understanding of what God has for us, of what God will have for us in the future. And really, with a lot of these people that I'm talking about, like PBK Social, who is actually Bruce Peters, people like him and and uh, people like Feminine Tim, well, those kind of guys, I don't see how they have any hope at all. What hope do they have? What hope do they really have in anything except the things of this world? Obviously, they're enjoying the things of this world. You know, this life is perfectly fine for them. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing, you know, <clears throat> no problem at all. So they, you know, they continue on uh, bashing those of us who believe otherwise. Those of us that believe that there's something better in the future. First, there's going to be something worse for mankind that's lost. Okay, and then another issue is this. The issue of salvation. And I've gone over this many times. The issue of salvation. For those that believe in conditional salvation... I would love for you to give me an answer to this. How do you witness? How do you witness to the lost? What do you tell them? What's the gospel? What do you tell them? Do you tell them that to be saved, you've got to be sinless? That you can't sin anymore? That you've got to be perfect? Well, the only person I know that was ever perfect and sinless was Jesus Christ. 
I know I, nobody else, none of us, the scriptures even say it. There's none righteous. No, not one. And I'm not, I'm not adopting the Calvinism belief, although that part that they believe about this, the, uh, the, sin, the sinful condition of man is true, but the part that they have wrong is the part where they believe in uh, the elect. They believe that predestination that people are predestined to either get lo uh, get saved or stay lost and go to hell. And I don't believe that if if that was true, why would we evangelize? <laughs> why would we go out and preach the gospel? You know, if somebody's going to get saved, they're going to get saved no matter what we do. You know, even though the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if that be true, then we have to get, they have, they have to hear the word, right? They have to hear the gospel and they respond and they do it by free will to respond and get saved. I saw recently a video, uh, a few different videos by Jesse Morrell and also from James White and also another man who got into the mix whose name is Emilio Ramos. He's a pastor. And he got into it at uh, UNT, which I think is Uni University of North Texas. It was somewhere in Texas recently. There was a street preachers convention that they have every year there. A lot of street preachers were there. Emilio Ramos went up and confronted Jesse Morrell. And they got into a big argument. I mean, condemning each other, basically. Two people who are supposed to be brothers in Christ condemning each other to hell. You know, because Emilio Ramos is a Calvinist. Well, James White's also a Calvinist. So James White came on and did a radio show not long after that, and he blasted Jesse Morrell. Now, I agree. There's some things that I disagree with on both sides. I don't think either one of them are complete, completely right on anything. You know, I mean, I think, uh, you know, this, like I said, this belief that uh, certain people are going to be saved, certain people absolutely cannot be saved, I think is wrong. But this idea also that Jesse Morrell has, he believes in, in conditional salvation. He doesn't believe in the eternal security of the believer. You know, in other words, he'd be one that says, I'm against once saved, always saved, because I believe you can lose your salvation because you're not being holy enough. This idea that you that it's your holiness that secures your salvation. You know, I can see they point out certain scriptures. I can see how you could take that and, and make that mean what you think it means. But then it would contradict other scriptures that say, for we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. You know, grieve not the Holy Spirit for, uh, by which you are sealed until the day of redemption. You know, uh, there are plenty of other scriptures concerning us being sealed until the day of redemption and that we have eternal life now. It's not that you may have eternal life, you might have it, as if it's contingent upon your life and the way you live about whether you have that salvation or not, or that eternal life. If that be true, then the cross means nothing. The death of, of Jesus on the cross means absolutely nothing if you can earn your way to heaven. So I have said it again and again, but I believe the scriptures absolutely show 100% that Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins. He died, he, died, he, ro he rose again three days after that. And that's that's really the hope that we have and that's how we obtain salvation eternal life and there's no other way to do it so you you can think that you know by being completely holy and, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't live your life you know I mean once we get saved once we're justified we do live our lives to please God yes because we're a new new creature in Christ you know um, so yes, we're going through that process of sanctification after justification. And um, I believe in that. So you're going to live your lives to please God at that point. 
after you get saved. You're not going to do it immediately because, you know, even though you've been justified, you do see things a different way, but you don't know that much yet until you start to learn from the scriptures about what the Word of God has to say. There's things I've learned so many times or so much in the last 30 years that I didn't know right at first when I got saved. I mean, it's just things you didn't know. You know, you grew up, maybe you grew up in a, in a Reformation type church or whatever, or a Catholic church, and you heard all of what they said, but you didn't quite get it. You didn't quite understand everything until you start digging into the Word of God and reading it and studying, and then you find out more that you didn't know bef uh, before. The things you didn't know before, you find out. Um, so, that's just my thoughts for today on this walk that I'm taking. Uh, I just wanted to get that out there. I still am very deeply concerned about the fact that we have such confusion in the church today and so many different doctrines that are opposed to each other. And we even have, you know, men of, that are supposed to be men of God like Jesse Morrell and Emilio Ramos and James White who are going at it and even saying that each other are condemned and not really saved. You know, so if they are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, why would they be saying this to each other? So anyway, that's my thoughts for today. Uh, if you have any comments, just let me know. But be, you know, at least be sincere. Don't be, you know, come across and with just hurling insults at me. I really want to know from those who disagree with me why you disagree specifically um, you know I want to know why you believe in um, why you believe in conditional salvation why you believe in amillennialism uh, why you believe that that all of what's in the prophets and in Revelation are metaphorical allegorical and not literal and why we just can't understand it. Or how you come to an understanding one way, and I come to an understanding another way, and then somebody else comes to another complete under different understanding of it. That's what I'm trying to get at. How could we be that far apart if all of us are indwelt by the Holy Spirit? With that, I'm going to say bye for now. God bless you all.